for this tutorial we're going to be adding two stored procedures. Um, the first one is going to be a report. We're going to want a report of all the customers that are signed up for e email newsletters and then the second one is going to be a stored procedure for adding new customers. So let's start off with um, our report. So right now the types of subscriptions um, our email newsletters, post mailers, monthly monthly specials. So we're gonna we want to know all the um, customers that um, need uh, that are signed up for the email newsletters. So we're gonna go ahead and create a stored procedure and save that as a report stored procedure. So we go ahead to programmability and open that up, and we can see stored procedures. And currently we don't have any besides the um, system stored procedures. So we're going to right click say new stored procedure and once again let's go and delete all the the comment generated code so we can make this a bit more readable so it's easier to follow and uh, understand. So the very first thing on the create procedure statement is we need a stored procedure name and, and the prefix I like to use is uh, SP and then an underscore and then because this is a report I like to start with um, report and then the name of it so this is the um, email newsletter and then there are the the next thing that it requires is parameters but in this case um, we don't we're not going to pass in any parameters we just want to know who signed up for email newsletters. So we don't have to um, pass in any um, filters or parameters to to make that report happen. So I'm going to just use the, the query builder. And we are going to need the customers, the subscriptions table, and the intersection table to join that many-to-many -many relationship. And we want to know the customer ID, the first name, last name, and um, and then we want to know the subscription name, and uh, and we said the subscription name. We're going to add a filter, our own filter here, is email newsletter, and that should be the filter we need. So I'm going to come in here. And uh, this is the query we just created. This this is the one that's going to grab it. And I've, I've just highlighted it. And I'm going to execute just that query itself to see if that's um, getting the correct one. Um, it might be newsletters. Ah, typo on my behalf. Uh, let me go and change the filter. There we go. And just make sure I highlight the statement just to do a test. And there we go. We have a few customers that are signed up here. And you can see it's returning their customer IDs, first name, last name, and uh, the newsletter. And I mean, for this report, because we want to know the newsletters, we don't necessarily have to display the name, but I like, I'm going to do that for this demonstration. So now I have deselected highlighting that query because now I actually want to run the, create the whole stored procedure. So I have uh, deselected that individual query and let's go execute and there we go and if we refresh our stored procedures we should have a new one here so let's go ahead and test this we can right click and say execute stored procedure and um, it has this neat little parameter screen but because it doesn't take any parameters we don't have to provide any so we can just go OK and we can see and our report is run and the stored procedure can be called from any languages that are connected to SQL Server um, for instance, like C Sharp, you can uh, um, use ADO.NET and or Entity Framework to call the stored procedure and get the results from it. And you not don't have to write any physical select statements in your code itself. They all sit inside the stored procedure. And th the nice thing is, if um, if later on something changes and you want to capture the date of birth on the stored procedure, all you have to do. Um, instead of releasing a new build of your application to Comet Edge, you can go and just modify the stored procedure and say, oh, okay, we wanted um, to add the customers and date of birth. And then you can go update the stored procedure, execute it to after you've made the modified change. And then um, we can go and uh, 
rerun our stored procedure. Let's go execute it again. Go OK. And we can see, ah, now the stored procedure is executing and it's including date of birth. So it makes it um, very seamless with being able to add or add different rules, new columns, uh, whatever your need might be. It, it adds a bit of flexibility so that this isn't all sitting inside of your application. Um, next up, we are going to add another stored procedure which takes parameters and will allow us to um, in add a new customer. So I'm going to go stored procedure underscore um, add customer and for this example it is going to take some parameters and I'm going to have to um, refresh my mind on what values so we have first name and which is a var car 50 last name var char 50 dob which is a date address var car 250 and excuse me i forgot to put an at sign in front of these to turn them into variables one address two city country post almost there and then um, we don't need to implement last updated date um, so now so the difference is now when we call the stored procedure we have to provide these parameters um, our SQL server will automatically throw an error if you do not provide one um, you do have the option of creating a default parameter so let's say you do not require um, the country because let's say your customers are all based in America you could default this to uh, USA and that way if country doesn't get provided then um, it will default to USA so and in fact for this implementation I will I'll leave that there um, just as an example and now we need an insert statement so I'm just going to build it in the query builder I'm gonna double click on customers and then we're going to change the type to insert values and we want to provide first name, last name, date of birth, address one to city and country postcode and then we need to provide our uh, variables that are being passed in at address one at city at, con at post code. Okay, so this should run smoothly, and as you can see. Um, the values that we're inserting are the parameters. We're using the parameters as the values to go into the table. And um, that should be it. That's our add customer. So let's go ahead and execute this. And it completes successfully. Now, let's go and refresh our stored procedures. And let's go try and execute this stored procedure, this add customer. So we're going to add a new one and, and call him um, um, Becky. Risk, date of birth. Let's just go five five two nine nineteen eighty five, and uh, and the address can be Main Street, Main 
Loading screen. Dress two. We're going to uh, dress two and suite five. City. Dallas country, and we're going to go ahead and uh, pass a null value and give a postcode. And and let's go and execute this. So we're going to test this out. I've left, I'm passing null into the country because I want to test that the um, default parameter for country defaults to USA. So we'll see if that works. And let's go. Uh, we have a problem with the date of birth because it has to be text. It has to be wrapped in these um, single quotes. So let's go ahead and try again. And there we go. It seems to be successful. So now the only way of knowing is by doing a query against the customer table, but I'm just going to uh, just uh, order by customer ID descending. And if I could spell correctly, that would be helpful. just look at the latest one entered and there we are um, here is our uh, newly added customer we can see Betty Risk and uh, um, and I think that our country didn't default to USA because we explicitly passed a null um, I forgot about that when you explicitly pass a null um, then it will remain null because we provided null as a value so let me take that value away <laughs> and can demonstrate again and execute and um, we'll return the last two um, so that's one thing to be aware of now you can see our country is there and uh, so that it de it uses the default parameter only when no value is provided so if you explicitly provide null it will still insert a null value so be aware of that thank you